Hello fish fools, Jeff here. So this is my 29 gallon sword tail community tank. It has sword tails, there's a male right there, some females, harlequin rasboras, we got some penguin tetras, zebra danios, there's a Siamese algae eater, and there's panda corridors. I think that's it for all the fish. And there's a ton of Malaysian trumpet snails. They blend into the substrate, but there is a ton of them. And we have some hardscape, some dragonstone over here, some Mopani wood plants. We have, this is Cryptocorn Wentii Red or Bronze. This is Java Fern. This is a Crinum Tyanum. This is one that I got from a, grew from a bulb in a assorted package of aquatic plant bulbs from Petco or PetSmart. This is Anubius Nana. This was propagated from my original Anubius Nana plant, the very first aquatic plant that I ever got that was initially in my 30 gallon planted community library tank. And then we have, this is Dwarf Sagittaria. That's a piece of Pogostemon stellatus octopus. And then pretty recently I put in this Savoisser tang. So I've been trying different things in this tank, just haven't had anything to grow consistently. Um, most recently, the Savoisser tang I added, and this seems to be working for what I wanted to do. I've tried water wisteria, um, willow hygrophilia, different things. I try to get like a bushy plant over here for the purpose of having a hideout for the swordtail fry because not that many sword tails have been surviving and growing up to adulthood. Um, this male was born in here and has grown up. And one or two of both of those females were born in here and grew up and the others were brought. I moved to my, my six foot 84 gallon community display tank. But, so, I noticed something. I was just looking over in this area because I, I knew I had some swordtail fry and I was just checking up on them. But I noticed something else, but let's check it out over here. So in here, Right there is a sword tail fry. And look a little bit further to the left of that. Right there, we have Corridora eggs. Panda Corridoras spawn, and there's some eggs. Looks like there's one right there. For sure, there's some right here. So it was totally. I'm not expecting that, but that is pretty awesome. Um, I've been wanting to try to raise corridor fry. I have, I did actually try with my panic, my pygmy corridors in one of my other tanks. I managed, one time when I witnessed them spawning, I collected eight of the eggs. They all hatched out. And of that, only one of the fry ended up surviving um, beyond maybe a couple weeks, and it ended up living a couple months, and I finally moved it to another tank, which is actually this tank right below, this 20 gallon, I ended up putting it in here, and 
thinking it would have made it to the point where it would be fine, and then for a few weeks it seemed okay, and then it just disappeared. And since the model here, so this is a 20 gallon long, I ended up putting one female guppy in here, and then this is all her offspring. The plan can kind of veered off course. I did add this yellow endler, yellow rainbow endler male, well, not rainbow, yellow tiger endler male, and another blue endler male. Wherever it is. Yeah, that's it right there. My plan was to put the female in here, let her have babies, and then let the virgin females grow up, remove the males so that I could breed the yellow tiger male and this blue one with them, but then I just never ended up taking them all out, and now it's just going to be a, a colony. And I added some Malaysian trumpet snails, and those have exploded. Some, I added some shrimp, those exploded. When I first set this up, it was intended to be a breeding tank for egg layers. And then just, you know, started with one guppy, and then there we go. Guppy on their hybrid, actually. Um, yeah, so now I have to figure out what I want to do. I would like to try to raise these corridor eggs or hatch them out. And I'm torn between just leaving them in here. I can see they're still clear, so they must have just been just laid those eggs. So after a couple days, they'll start darkening and you'll see, you can kind of see the, something inside them. But I did, I, I did also have, a while back, when I was just watching this tank, I wasn't sure, I, and I noticed a little miniature panda corridor, so these are the adults here. Totally unexpected, yeah, there's the bigger, Red swordtail fry. Yeah, I noticed a, and I, a while back I showed a video of it. Just a min, little miniature panda corridor fry. So, oh, you know, they had, I never noticed eggs before, and then just out of nowhere, this little miniature panda corridor joined the, the group. So it was born in here, hatched out and grew up to that. I'm not sure if one of these is now that same one growing up, or exactly if it survived entirely, but just based on that, I know that I could just leave the eggs in here and hope for the best. They could hatch out. They, over here, they should be undisturbed from all those other adult fish in the tank and if they can manage to just stay in the cover of the subwasser tank over here just like the swordtail fry then they could be alright or if I should try to separate them and raise them so as it is now it's pretty late and I have to get up real early tomorrow I and I wasn't planning on doing anything, just really, I just intended to take a look at the swordtail fry, and I found those. So for the time being, I'm just going to have to leave them in here. I don't really have a, a plan if I want to try to separate them. I mean, it's awesome that they have done so. Maybe I'll just let it, try to let it run its natural course, see if they hatch out and survive on their own, if that doesn't work maybe if I watch for next time I'll separate the eggs but yeah
So we got swordtail fry in here and pygmy corridors. Uh, not pygmy, panda corridors in this tank. They spawn and laid some eggs. So we'll see what happens with those. All right. Well, that's it for now. And remember, I'm Jeff, and I enjoy fishies. Thanks for watching.